This lesson is about systems of equations and their graphical representations and also how to determine whether a system will have a solution or not and whether it has an infinite number of solutions. I'm going to work through these three examples using matrices and try to reduce each system to row echelon form so that I can solve the system. If you know how to do that, or if you know another systematic method for solving systems of equations, then pause the video and try for yourself before watching my solutions. Here's example number 8 in matrix form. I'm going to replace row 2 with row 2 take 2 lots of row 1, and row 3 with row 3 plus row 1. And you can see that I've actually eliminated two entire rows of the matrix. If we look back at the original equations, this is like taking equation 1 and multiplying by 2, and taking equation 3 and multiplying by negative 2. So you see that we've actually defined the same plane three times. Graphically, this just looks like one single plane, because that's what it is. So our system of equations has an infinite number of solutions, because every point on each plane is also a point on each of the other two planes, because they're the same plane. Now looking at the row echelon form of the matrix, what this looks like is a row of zeros. And those rows of zeros mean that 0x plus 0y plus 0z equals 0. And the reason it has an infinite number of solutions is because you can pick any value you like for x, y or z, and this equation will always hold true. With the matrix form of example number 9, I'm going to replace row 2 with row 2 take 2 lots of row 1, and row 3 with row 3 take row 1. And again, this has resulted in a row of zeros, and then the third row has reduced to 5y equals 2. So we know that y is 2 fifths. And from the first row, x take 2y plus 3z equals 5, which I can simplify to 5x plus 15z equals 29. So let's have a look at that row of zeros. This is just like taking equation 1 multiplying by 2, and that's the same as equation 2. So we've defined the same plane twice, but then the third equation represents a different plane, and it intersects the first plane along this line 5x plus 15z equals 29. The pink plane on the graph here is the graphical form of those first two equations, and the green plane is x plus 3y plus 3z equals 7. So you can see that the two planes intersect along a line, and so there is still an infinite number of solutions to the system of equations. Any point along that line, or any point which has a y value of 2 fifths and x and z connected by this equation will satisfy the three equations in the original question. In example number 10, I'm going to replace row 2 with row 2 take row 1, and row 3 with row 3 plus 2 lots of row 1. And then to reduce to row echelon form, I'm going to replace row 3 with row 3 plus row 2. And the resulting matrix also has a row of zeros. If we just look at the first two rows, this is telling us that we have two planes which intersect, but the third row is uninformative. It tells us that 0x plus 0y plus 0z is 0, but that is no new information from the first two planes. So graphically what this means is we have two planes intersecting and when two planes intersect they intersect along an infinite number of points which make a line. 
the third plane in this example, it's uninformative, which means it doesn't add any new solutions, also intersects along that same line. This is what it looks like. So you can see all three planes intersecting along an infinite number of points which form a straight line. Here's a summary of those three examples. With each question I've shown the matrix in row echelon form and commented on the graphical representation of the solutions. So in the first example the matrix had two rows of zeros because it was actually the same plane listed three times and therefore we had an infinite number of solutions. In the second example we had one plane listed twice and that's where this row of zeros came from and the third plane was not parallel to the first plane and so there were an infinite solutions where those two planes intersected along a line. In the third example we had three planes meeting along a common line and again infinite solutions and that row of zeros comes in because once we found the line of intersection between the first two planes the third plane intersects along that same line as well and therefore does not add anything to the solution. How many solutions are there to the equation ax equals b? Well, if we start by saying that a is not equal to 0, then for every value of b, this equation has a single unique solution. For example, 3x equals 6, that would make x 2. If 3x equals 0, that makes x 0. However, if a is equal to 0, then depending on the value of b, we may have no solutions or we may have an infinite number of solutions. If b is equal to 0 as well, then x can be anything and this equation will hold true. So we would have an infinite number of solutions. However, if a is 0 and b is not 0, then there are no solutions to the equation. So when we're working with matrices to solve a system of equations, the starting point is to try and reduce the matrix to row echelon form, which means that we have zeros in the bottom left corner in a step formation. The hashes here can be any number, but once we have the matrix in row echelon form, the values of P and Q here will determine how many solutions the system will result in. So remember that 0, 0, P, Q really means P, Z equals Q, and we're trying to work out how many solutions exist. So firstly, if P is not equal to 0, then there will be a single unique solution to the system. And in this case, Q may or may not be 0. If P is equal to 0, and q is also equal to 0, then we'll have an infinite number of solutions. And if p is equal to 0, but q is not equal to 0, then we will have no solutions. Working through a couple of examples to finish, I'll start by writing the system in matrix form. Then to reduce to row echelon form, I'll replace row 2 with row 2 plus row 1, and row 3 with row 3 take three lots of row 1. And we're not quite in row echelon form, so now I'll replace row 3 with row 3 take row 2. And the question is asking, for what value of P will this system have a unique solution? So looking at third row of the final matrix, we have P take 3, Z equals 21. And as long as P take 3 is not equal to 0, this system will have a unique solution. So in other words, P cannot equal 3. Finally, we're going to determine the values of P and Q for this system of equations to have no solutions, an infinite number of solutions, or a unique solution. Again, we'll start by writing the system in matrix form. 
and to reduce to row echelon form I'll replace row 2 with row 2 take 2 row 1 and row 3 with row 3 take 3 row 1 then I'll replace row 3 with row 3 plus 2 row 2 so that final row in the matrix is saying that P take 4 Z is equal to Q take 11 now for no solutions we would need P take 4 to equal 0 and Q take 11 to be something other than 0 which means that P equals 4 and Q is not equal to 11. For an infinite number of solutions we need P take 4 to equal 0 and Q take 11 to also equal 0. So that means that P is 4 and Q is 11. And for a single unique solution we just need P take 4 to be something other than 0. So P cannot be 4. But there are no restrictions on Q.